Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're heading straight to looking at our major conversation on the show, the supplementary budget. And uh, of course, we do have an economist who will join the conversation. But a little bit of background to what is actually happening has happened uh, following the suspension of fuel subsidy policy. President Mohamed Buhari has transmitted the 2022 Appropriation Act Amendment Bill to the National Assembly. Now, the president is seeking approval from the National Assembly, uh, the sum of 2.557 trillion naira supplementary budget for petrol subsidy from July 2022 to December 2022. And this is as a result of the U-turn to stop the subsidy by June. The highlights of the 2022 appropriation amendment bill includes asking the National Assembly to review the Finance Act 2021 to restore the provision made for various key capital projects in the 2022 executive proposal that were cut by the National Assembly and to reinstate the 25.81 billion naira cut from the provision for the past sector uh, reform program in order to meet the federal government's commitment under the financing plan agreement with the World Bank. Others are to reinstate the four capital projects totaling 1.42 billion naira in the executive proposal for the Federal Ministry of Water Resources that were removed in the 2022 Appropriation Act, among others. I mean, the list is almost endless, but we do have Ogbon Laho Olojide, who is an economist who joins the conversation this morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Nice to be here. All right, so, so let's talk about this now. Um, to share your thoughts, uh, despite the fact that we are financially challenged, I mean, looking at that, we're going to be spending 22% of uh, the 2022 budget on debt servicing, uh, which reflects that we do not have uh, the capacity uh, to actually meet our financial demands. It means that we will be servicing our 2022 budget by debt, and that's what it means. Uh, we're here now looking at the supplementary budget of 2.577 trillion naira. What do you make of this? Well, it's the, it's the choice we have made. Um, apparently, I think that politicians have succeeded in pushing us in this direction. In the real sense of it, there is no politician who wants to remove full subsidy in an election season because they know that if you remove it, um, there will be all sort of uh, protests and uprising, and uh, it might affect their own prospect in the election. So, what a politician would naturally enjoy is money to be able to spend, not protest. Nobody wants a protest. So, when we pass the PIA, and part of the PIA also includes the deregulation of the downstream. When we got to the junction where we're supposed to make a decision, we are unable to make that decision. So we, we pushed ourselves in the direction of what the politician wants, which is to have money to spend. So since it's, oh, you don't want uh, for us to oh, that's fine. Take the, let's let's uh, make provision to spend money on first subsidy since you don't want to remove the subsidy. Then let's, let's make provision. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is that we will be borrowing this 2.57 trillion, and then we will share it among ourselves in, in the name of subsidy. That's what we want, since we are unable to come to the table and have a honest discussion around fuel subsidy. We think it is a you versus me and we versus them kind of situation. We're not at that point where we're, re we're seriously ready to address this matter, and that is where, 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 we're, where we're heading now. Uh, Mr. Olojede, let's look at uh, the fact that we're in the situation because, you know, we don't have uh, uh, refining capacity. Of course, yes, we know the government has told us they're rehabilitating or renovating, whichever it is, um, the Port Agar refineries and then the Wari and Kaduna refineries will be done uh, subsequently. Um, but if we look at the fact that uh, $15 billion is expected to be the amount of the cost of building the Dangote refinery, and uh, that amounts to about 6.2 trillion naira. Um, shouldn't we just be taking this money we use every year for fuel subsidies and probably just give it to the private sector and say, take and build a refinery and then give us a, 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 a stake or add this to what you want to build a refinery with? Because this money could be used for that. So we don't have to <laughs> you know, import fuel and then worry about the whole subsidy and, and all that. Uh, unfortunately, um, government cannot just do out money like that. 
Uh, the role of government is to create the right environment for private money to come in into that in, to come into that space. And, and I think there is an element of that, which is why today we have the Dangote refinery, which was meant to have come on stream earlier, but unfortunately um, has not been able to get operational. Um, according to information, by quarter three, by the end of quarter three this year, uh, it should go live. And like you mentioned, government is also, has also awarded the revamp. In April last year, it awarded uh, Portacot refineries. In August, it awarded both Kaduna and Warri refineries. You know, this is all in a bid to get refining capacity in the mix. There's also uh, there's, there's, there's an illusion side of things about how fuel will become very cheap once we start to refine. It is an illusion and it is important that we get that out of our minds totally. It is not, refining inside the country has its own advantage or advantages. It stimulates the economy, it creates jobs. There are a whole lot of multiplier effects that that will create. But one of the things it will not create is cheap fuel. It doesn't mean that because we are now refining inside, uh, fuel will now become 100 naira per liter. It's not about to happen. What we will have is what I would call a relatively cheaper fuel because the cost, the importation logistic cost, so uh, you pay for shipping, there is clearing and whatever, all those costs will not be there. So there will be a marginal decrease in what the price should be. But it is not all those dreamy uh, one fifty naira. But no, 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 no. That's but, not what we're going to have. But, but, but Mr. Mr. Lodini, so, you know, it, it, it's 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 a resource. If the federal federal government is spending um, uh, to um, this amount of money to to import fuel and also to subsidize the fuel imported, and it means that they can subsidize without necessarily doling out money. In other words, if if they're able to be able to refine in this country. Um, either tr through the federal government owned refineries or through um, uh, refineries done with federal government shares in them, they may be able to find it easier to to um, uh, to to give us uh, uh, an, a significantly cheaper fuel. You know, compared to marginally, you're saying, you know. That is the point. It is not going to be a significantly cheaper fuel. The only cost we will save is the importation logistic cost. So you, they, they, you ship crude, if you are doing a swap, so you, there's a cost of shipping the crude to the refiner, and then a cost of shipping it back to the country. There will be some clearing charges and all the rest. That is what we are going to see. All this matter may not be more than 10% or let's, even, let's, let's, let's play an extreme lock and say 15% uh, reduction. It is significant if you look at it. But it is far away from what people are envisaging, that once we start refining, this well will come cheap. No, it is the cost of refining that will still go into what price we're going to pay. So you, there's still the price of the crude, there is, this, there is the overhead of the, of, of, of the refiner, and several others that will go into that to determine what is the final uh, 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 cost to the consumer. Mm. So, what so, we have okay. right now... Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if if so, if we have this um, two point uh, uh, um, uh, over two trillion naira uh, being set aside to to fund the subsidy, um, what do you say about the fact that it's costing about fifteen billion dollars, six point two trillion naira to build the Dangote refinery? Out of that, the federal government is farming out four billion naira to buy shares and to support this building through the NMPC. Um, should we not just be taking the, the, the bullet and saying, you know what, we're ending this, we can take this money, instead of using it to subsidize every year, we can take this money and ensure that we can have our own fuel refined in Nigeria? You see, I'm, I'm going to be frank with you. The way we have approached the matter of fuel subsidy, rightly so, is to think that it is a we versus them situation, the people versus the government. And, uh, and there's a justification for that. that. That issue has its roots in the trust capital between the government and the people. So the people are disillusioned because over and over again, government has promised and has not delivered. There has been a lot of deceit in that space. So these are the things that are making it appear as if it, is, it has to be a against them. No, the first subsidy is real. 
And what we need to be able to do is to discuss it honestly, get all the stakeholders across around the table, put all the cards on the table. This is the reality of this, this is the reality, this is the reality of this. And let us together fashion a solution that is going to be a compromise for everybody. It, it, it is not uh, to, to think that we can fundamentally change that space without some bit of pain is, 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 is a deceit. So if all the stakeholders are sitting across the table and we're willing to discuss honestly, we cannot come up with a solution that will work for us as a country. But if we decide to play this we against them, this is what we're going to have. They say, oh, let's remove first subsidy. They say, no, 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 you cannot remove subsidy. Say, okay, since you don't want us to remove subsidy, we will be paying this much as subsidy. So they, they are putting us in between the devil and the deep blue sea. Okay, so let's talk about financing and, uh, as you know, the implication of this. Of course, we're still talking about the issue of um, we having to fund uh, the 2022 budget with four point, I mean, borrowings, uh, we're looking at 6.4 trillion naira. And so if we don't have enough monies, uh, that's what it means, we have to borrow to fund the budget. Where will the Nigerian government get 2.557 trillion? I said it. We will be borrowing it and sharing it as subsidy. So what, what will so be the implication for the economy and uh, the Nigerian people? When does this leave the people? The implication is that we are digging a deeper hole. Right now, um, it, it, it's still, we're still managing to, you know, to maneuver our way through the means. In the next, over the next few months, if we go along the same line, borrowing 2.557 trillion and sharing it, a subsidy, we will get to a point we won't be able to pay salaries. All the, the federal workers and all that, we won't be able to fund anything in this country. We are going to bring this country under a debt overhang. We won't be able to move forward. In fact, at some point, the creditors will start becoming unwilling to give Nigeria an additional penalty. Hmm. Well, that... We don't have to go to that length. We don't have to drag ourselves to that junction. It, 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 it so, seems it seems the the uh, the the economic policy of this government uh, federal government in Nigeria, um, led by President Muhammadu Buhari, is is the policy or the model they are they are operating is simply um, borrow borrow money no. to, to solve your problems. Mm. Um, but but and also of course, remember pump money into the economy um, uh, if 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 sectors need money and keep pumping. And now we're hearing that um, they won't be giving the uh, the commercial deposit deposit money banks any FX. Um, uh, so, so th this this model of borrowing and borrowing, you say it, it drives us, drive us into a grave. But I, I, I'd like to just step aside. I think, Messi, you have a follow-up question, so let's take Yes, a bit of that, back. because uh, we remember the time where the finance minister, uh, Zainab Ahmed, made some statements saying that we are within the capacity of borrowing, and therefore um, we have not exceeded our capacity to borrow. And here you're saying that it would just plunge us... Uh, to, to a state where we're unable to pay salaries because we're, we'll be looking at the issue of spending about 70% of, you know, the capital expenditure on debt servicing and what happens to infrastructure. But I'd like you to share your thoughts on um, the fact that we are within our borrowing capacity as a country. Okay. Um, that is a comfortable statement or a comforting statement from the government. You know, there are two ways to, the, to look at these things. One is what you call your debt to GDP. When you look at the debt to GDP of Nigeria, it is fantastic. We are well within the range of what we should be borrowing. In fact, we are not borrowing nearly enough at all if it is debt to GDP you are looking at. But here is the problem. Nobody pays, repays debt from GDP. You repay your debt from revenue. So what we should be looking at is not just debt to GDP, which the government is emphasizing, but the debt to the revenue. According to the IMF, in 2022, Nigeria will be spending 92% of its actual revenue servicing debts. 92. That is the projection of the IMF. So when you look at, when you look at the revenue side of things, it is horrible. It is abysmal. But if you want to play on, uh, you know, trying to comfort the, 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 the people that, oh, we are still doing okay, then you, you lean on the, on, on the debt to GDP ratio. The problem of Nigeria is that it has a huge GDP, but it has been unable to, trans, 
to translate that GDP into a sizable revenue. The GDP of South Africa is smaller than that of Nigeria. But when you look at the revenue size of South Africa, it's about four times what Nigeria budgets every year. So you need to ask yourself, how is it that some countries are able to make four times on a smaller GDP and Nigeria is unable to do it? Unless we are able to deal with the revenue issue, which is at the heart of our problem, this debt has reached a non-sustainable level. By the time you will be servicing there with 92% of your revenue, you know there's a crisis. Borrowing an additional 2.557 trillion and sharing it as subsidy is not something that should be on the table. But unfortunately, it's already at the National Assembly. And it may get an approval. That's the interesting thing. It's unfortunate. Um, such a bleak picture, you know, where um, we're looking for solutions and some sort of creativity from the government beyond um, borrowing and borrowing and uh, increasing taxes. Um, some will say some one of the ways to increase revenue or reduce expenditure is, is actually to reduce your expenditure, especially uh, recurrent expenditure and spending on frivolities, but uh, we've not seen any of that. Uh, from this administration. I would have loved to ask you questions on the direct purchase, direct sale model and uh, who the subsidy payment is going to because the opaqueness in the oil sector, you know, makes it a bit, you know, hazy. We, we can't really tell what's going on. Uh, but we'll, we'll have some other time to discuss this with you. Uh, Bola Ho Lojede is an economist and he's in our guest on The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much. And a belated happy birthday to you from all of us here, including our um, production team who are behind the cameras here saying we should wish you a belated happy birthday. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, quite quite a, a bleak picture there as far as the Nigerian economy is concerned. And um, we just hope for better days. <laughs> we hope for better days. We have more discussions ahead.